In this next example, we want to find the area of the part of the sphere that lies inside this paraboloid. So let's get a sketch of these objects. So we've got our sphere. We'll get a feel for what that looks like first. x squared plus y squared minus 4y plus z squared is equal to 0 or x squared plus, I'll complete the square here, y minus 2 all squared plus z squared. And when I completed the square, I added a 4 on the left side, so I balance it by adding a 4 on the right side. So this is a circle that has been shifted two units along the positive y axis and has a radius of 2. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be a, a sphere that's coming out along here. That's a our center at 2 and a radius of 2, so it comes out here till 4. Put a few more curves in here to give us our perspective of depth. Okay, so there's our sphere. And we're interested in the portion that lies inside this paraboloid. So this is a paraboloid that's opening around the y-axis. So let's get this paraboloid sketched in here. It's going to look something like this. So there's our paraboloid. And we want the portion of the sphere that lies inside this paraboloid. So that's this portion of the sphere here. something like that. And that's what we want the surface area of. I am going to get rid of the paraboloid drawing that lives outside of this region we're interested in. So I'll just draw a few more perspective curves in here and then I'll get rid of the outside stuff just so our diagram's not as cluttered. Okay, so there we go. This intersection of the sphere and the paraboloid is one thing we are interested in. So where do they intersect? Maybe we'll color that purple. What is their intersection? So we've got, for the paraboloid, y is equal to x squared plus z squared. So I can take my equation for my sphere, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and I can replace the x squared plus, y, plus z squared with a y. So we get y plus y squared is equal to 4y. So there's our intersection. Uh, in other words, y squared is equal to 3y, or y is equal to 0 or 3. So that says they're going to intersect right here at the origin when y is 0, and they're also going to intersect when y is 3. So that means that that's out here at a value of 3. So let's zoom in a little bit and get a feel for what's going on. We've got our sphere. It's centered at 2. The intersection happens at 3. And the sphere extends all the way out to 4. So there's our sphere drawn in the background here. So it's a portion of the sphere that's like the, let's say, the if I was to think about looking at it by rotating it counterclockwise 90 degrees, I'm thinking of it like there's the northern cap of this sphere. There's this sort of hemisphere or the north pole that I'm trying to find the surface area of. So that's what we are interested in. Okay, so what we'll do is we will set up everything as if uh, y was a function of x and z. So we'll look at everything as the inputs are coming from the xz plane and the outputs are along the y-axis. So in this case, I'm looking at this as y is a function of x and z. So for my sphere, if I continue on with this, I get that 4 minus x squared minus z squared square rooted 
plus 2 is equal to y. So our function is 2 plus the square root of 4 minus x squared minus z squared. All right, I think we've got everything set up. Well, maybe I should do one more thing and just look at the region we are integrating over in the xz plane. That's going to be this circular disk that's coming from the intersection curve. Maybe I'll put that in purple just because it's coming from the intersection curve. Our intersection curve's happening when y is equal to 3. So if I'm thinking about what uh, y equals 3 is in terms of our equation of our a sphere, when y is equal to 3, I get that x squared plus z squared is equal to 4 times 3 is equal to 12 minus 3 squared, minus 9, or in other words, that's equal to 3. In other words, this is a circle of radius square root of 3. And that's what we are integrating over. So we have that r in this case is going to go from 0 to root 3, and theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Again, we're switching to polar coordinates. So now we can go ahead and write down what the surface area is. It's the integral over this disk here, this disk d, in the xz plane. Uh, we are integrating the square root of 1 plus f sub x plus f sub z, each of them squared, dA. We are going to switch to polar coordinates in the xz plane. So we've got x is equal to r cos theta, z is equal to r sine theta. And so this integral becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to root 3, square root of 1 plus. Okay, so this I'm going to need to work out. What is the x derivative? What is the z derivative? So we'll go back here and we'll just make a note that f sub x is equal to, it's the derivative of that square root, so we get a square root in the denominator, square root of 4 minus x squared minus z squared, and then derivative of the inside is negative 2x, that just gives us a negative x on top because the 2 would have cancelled with the 1 half when I took the derivative of the square root. f sub y, same thing, negative y over square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And so then if I square each of those and add them up, I get an x squared plus a y squared all over 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And then that's our dA still, but we've switched to polar coordinates, so that's r dr d theta. I still haven't switched the integrand to polar coordinates yet, so I've got to do that. 0 to 2 pi, 0 to root 3. When I group what's under the square root sign over a common denominator, I get a 4 minus x squared minus y squared on top, plus the x squared plus y squared, so I just get a 4 on top, but I'm square rooting it, so I get a 2 over the square root of 4 minus x squared plus y squared, but that's r squared. And then our dr d theta, and then we have our r as well, which I can put up top. And so now we can work out the integral. The theta can be done on its own, because there's no theta present in the limits of integration for r or the integrand, so that's 2 pi times the integral with respect to r, the antiderivative would be 4 minus r squared square rooted with a negative 2 out front, and that's going from 0 to root 3. So this becomes negative 4 pi times the square root of 4 minus 3 minus the square root of 4. Or in other words, it's 1 minus 2, or negative 1, times negative 4 pi, so we get a result of 4 pi. And so that is the area 
of the portion of the sphere that lives inside the paraboloid. All right, that's it for this example. In the last video, we just do one more example. So we'll see you in the next video.